So here's part two of the HeBit install, actually with the HeBit finished and installed. So we'll walk through the uh, actual installation. I'll show you guys what it looks like now it's done. All right, so here's the, the full printer, and currently in a temporary box, which I'll do another quick video on. Uh, but here's the, the heat bin, the way that it sits. Uh, you can see it actually just has the aluminum with glass on top. I didn't intend on using a mirror, um, but just for a reason at the time, I ended up cutting a sheet of glass, and I wanted to see the thermal pads. In my case, I ended up finding out the hard way that the aluminum is actually bent in the corner. So make sure you check your flatness of your aluminum first. But yeah, this sucks. Um, so there's a bend, basically goes to about here the middle, and then this almost bends back a tiny bit as well. So it's a slight bump right in the middle of the bed, which really sucks, but at least the glass helps, but it does make leveling a pain. But once you have it leveled, it does work really well. So you can see it does sit quite a bit higher than aluminum. Um, you know, we might do some other options in the future, but right now this works. Again, mine is the glass, aluminum, and the heat bed is sandwiched uh, just under this uh, thermal insulation, which is really just a, uh, a neoprene rubber. You can see the way it looks underneath uh, from the first video. We have the uh, thermistor right there in the middle going up through that hole, and it comes out right to just under the uh, glass. So you get a nice uh, surface temperature there rather than uh, measuring temperature from the bottom. Uh, the corners. Uh, the countersunk flatheads are sitting nicely under those thermal pads, right, so you don't see them even. You can't put it that far to the corner anyways, but it's nice at least that they're hidden and the glass isn't sitting on those. The glass is, you know, edge to edge. If you don't line it up perfectly, it's not a big deal. So it makes it really nice and easy to use. And then you have the, um, try to get under here a bit. Hang on. I gotta do this one, it's a bit hard. So I'll try to film the back here. <laughs> as best as I can and hopefully you guys can see as I stick this camera in here uh, basically you have the springs which I'll show on the outside again but you have the, the uh, I think they're four millimeter springs on a five bolt which does work uh, these are the Ultimaker springs that are labeled on eBay uh, but these could really be better springs uh, I'll talk about it in a second and then you have uh, and I used an M5 45 uh, you could actually just use an M540 uh, you don't need them to be this long and then uh, some nylock nuts here and I'll talk about that in a second so basically you put on your your nylocks and you tighten them down until you get the bed level uh, four point leveling right you can see I actually have a uh, fifth M5 here just sitting right now not doing anything I do have some ideas for a bracket for a three point bed leveling which I think will make this much easier so I'll be testing that out in the future uh, here's the outside view of the spring. You can see they're pretty darn compressed. And what's difficult is that the spring doesn't actually easily slide over the the screw. Um, so it, 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 you have to kind of force it in. And there is some bounce to it. I'm not going to show the bounce right because it's probably going to knock my bed off level. I'm not taking a chance right now. But the that spring could be a little bigger, right? So I think maybe something like Colin has a 10 millimeter spring or maybe an 8mm spring will probably work a little better, give you a little more room there support the bed probably a little better, I have a a washer that's basically pushed into that neoprene rubber right, so it'd be nice to use some bigger washers there too so I think definitely room for some better springs for the bed there and then the nylocks on the bottom again down here, all in the back uh, suck, so do not use nylocks um, you could use them if you wanted to lock the bed in but they are nearly impossible to turn by hand so I did have uh, some of these uh, thumb leveling which I made of a whole bunch of different sizes just to play around with right I'll, I'll post these once I figure out the right size uh, but these are the same uh, open SCAD file that's used for the wades uh, just an M5 size bolt so they do work and they fit on nicely but again the M5 nut is nearly impossible to uh, tighten by hand so I do have some regular M5 not uh, just regular M5 nuts, not no nylocks, uh, which I'll be using uh, later on as soon as I need to adjust this again and possibly swap out for the mirror later on. So like I said, right now it works. Uh, I've been printing on the bed. It works fine. Uh, the one caveat with the heat bed that's worth noting, you can see it gets freaking cold. 
right? I think that's 4.8 degrees. Uh, it's actually 10 degrees in the room. And the wand over here somewhere shows about uh, 9, I think. So the, the downside of having such a big aluminum bed is it does absorb the, the, the cold and probably makes it worse is this thermal pad. So it's, it's a double-edged uh, double sword, if you will. That it absorbs heat really well um, and then also absorbs the cold very well. So this will often be, you know, right now it's 4.8. I, I definitely come out here in the morning, it's at 1 degree when it's about 8 or 9 outside. So I'll have to bring this inside eventually. The other downside, what happens with the big aluminum bed in the dual zone, which I think is important to note, is if you think about the the, sec the inner zone, it goes to roughly about here, right, the edge of this pad, somewhere here, right, as big square here, and it's really handy when printing up things like this uh, space needle I did before, and you only need the inner zone, but the downside is it actually takes much longer to cool because the heat is in, in the middle, but is actually being dissipated or absorbed into the rest of the aluminum, so you can actually touch outside here and still feel it's pretty hot even though you're not heating it that means the inside it takes longer to heat up so I've noticed the heat up times are take longer so what I've gotten in the habit of doing which for now works is just flipping the outer zone on letting it heat up to temperature I would say it roughly takes about a minute to get to the 65 degrees um, I haven't really timed it you know obviously it depends on the outer temperature if it's only 10 degrees in the room it's going to take longer uh, and how long the aluminum has been sitting uh, but then it'll heat up pretty quick and as soon as it's at that roughly 60, 65 of the printing temperature I'll then flip the zone off and, and then the inside stays pretty stable um, I did that a couple times today and it worked fine so I think that's, that's it to note for the heat bed and the install um, once the, you get the aluminum bed in there you'll notice the printer becomes extremely heavy and nearly impossible to move I used to be able to lift it up easily with one hand there's no way that's happening right now. This thing is heavy. And the, the captain tape here on the edge is just because I sliced off my finger a couple times there and a couple of other places. So if you do cut your own glass, uh, put some captain tape, save your fingers. Uh, again, thermal pads, I think that's it. I did try binder clips, which would work if it wasn't for my bent aluminum. So check your aluminum for flatness. And that's it for the heated bed.